assalamu alaikum everyone uh, joining me today on nobi talks uh, is uh, anet ronin anet is basically from uh, houston texas in united states of america she's uh, she's an artist she works with uh, she generally does murals and uh, 3d street art as well as uh, she paints on wood panels and canvases so um, uh, so thank you anet for taking out time uh, to for joining me and uh, you know for our session or podcast thank you of course thank you for having me always happy to meet uh, friends and colleagues from all over the world it's fun yeah yeah thank you thanks again so yeah let's let's just start with uh, the my my questions so Firstly, uh, you know, tell us about yourself. Uh, where you actually from? Since I know that you are actually from uh, Israel and uh, you moved to uh, USA. Uh, I don't know when did you move. So tell us about that. When did you move to USA? And uh, were you like uh, doing art back when back in Israel as well, or is it something that you started in uh, United States? So tell us about your background uh, a little bit. Okay. So um, yes, I am. I was born and raised in in Israel, the state of Israel. Um, my um, my parent, my all, all my family is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided, me and my husband and my son, decided to come here um, 15 years ago. Uh, we decided to try to come here because we didn't really have a plan. Um, until then, I was working in offices, I was doing finances mostly, and never ever did I ever think to be an artist. Uh, not because I, I wasn't, I mean, I always dubbed the art, art and did all kinds of stuff, but it never occurred to me that I'm good enough for people to actually pay attention and pay me money for. So I was like, yeah, for a hobby, you know, it's nice, you know, uh, like I uh, typically, you know, there's people who are good in sports, but not everyone is good in sports is going to be Michael Jordan and, and not everybody is good in music is going to be Pink Floyd. So you, you kind of, you know, you, you, you assume that you're not good enough. Um, and um, only after we came here, again, nothing to do with art. Um, um, I had to change, we had to change the, the status, uh, the visa type that we had um, just to get independent. And the way to do it was through um, basically um, forming our own company and me working for it and asking for a visa to work for it because there was no other way. I didn't go to school. I don't have a diploma. Um, I didn't, I don't have any, you know, tangible something to say, hey, you know, just take me for, for this. So I had to kind of invent the wheel. And um, that's how I found, um, I guess, the courage to get into art. Um, and I, I did it first just to stay here um, and to have that visa. Uh, and obviously to pay the bills because by that time my husband couldn't go to work because that was illegal for him to go work uh, when he doesn't have the visa for that. And, um, and then I started to realize that I'm not awfully bad at it. And uh, I started going to festivals to kind of learn more and to kind of spread out and kind of, kind of uh, actually collect more information and evidence for the green card because a visa is only temporary. So in my mind, I was like, okay, if I go to festivals and if I show, hey, I was in, you know, this and that and this and that festivals, then, um, you know, when, when I apply for a green card, they'll say, oh, that, that, that woman is pretty good because they, you know, invite her to all those festivals. Doesn't matter the, you know, the details that really those festivals, it's mostly you go, you know, if you can, but it's not, it's not, it's not a lot about invitation. It's more about who can actually afford to go. Um, but anyways, I, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot from my friends and my peers and looking around and um, I just kept on going and uh, gaining experience and gaining knowledge and, and figuring out how to be at the top of my game, um, again, not only to uh, to make a living and not only to be, you know, to fulfill this artist in me, but also to stay here and and to, you know, 
um, be able to not go back to the country I came from. Um, and then in the process is just that I, I really became this artist that I am and I became my art, which is incredible because it's, it's really the greatest gift, I think, more than anything else. Right, Ray. Uh, so, so I have a, a follow-up question. That uh, since uh, since I think uh, if I am not wrong, uh, you didn't go to any art school or uh, had a pr proper training as an artist. Uh, you are pretty much uh, a self-taught artist, right? Right. Yeah. So. Right. Uh, so what? So, so, so this brings me uh, to the question that uh, did you like? Uh, were you painting in Israel as well, or how? Where, where did you get your training from? Because you're very good uh, at art. Uh, I've been following ever since I've been doing like three D art and all. Started meeting or connecting with different people. So I have been following your work for a good, I think, five six years now, and uh, you know I found you work to be very impressive and you do these uh, very large scale murals and all by yourself and they're very good so what was your training like like what kind of training did you go through like you said that you went to a lot of uh, festivals and different art events there were there you did learn from uh, many artists but uh, what was your training like uh, so kindly explain uh, a little about it there was not really any training. Um, I think um, a lot of what I do is intuition. Um, and I think that is something that, um, you know, if you go to school, you kind of lose that because your teacher kind of let, you know, tell you what to do or, or expect certain things from you. So you lose that initial feel. It's like a little bit like, you know, um, doing, you know, a lot of diets and forgetting how, what it is to be hungry, you know, uh, in the Western world, that's what happens. There's a, we eat, we, you know, with our eyes. So the same goes with art when, you know, when you go to school and they install these things on you and they tell you how to do stuff. And I just didn't have that. And so whatever I do comes from, I'll just figure it out. Like literally, I don't have a plan most of the, plan, the times. I do have a plan, meaning uh, I work with grid. I like, I like the grid method because it gives me like a, a, a map of sorts. Um, and I can, you know, kind of locate myself at all times. And I, I can go back to places that I don't, you know, seem to, you know, didn't seem to have worked for me too well. Um, but really, I let intuition really guide me and it's been amazing an amazing journey because you know again we a lot of times are taught to not listen to yourself and and or push yourself against your grain or I don't know whatever you know stuff you know they, they teach you in school um, but I just didn't have any of that back in a day like before my son was born so that was 26 years ago I took like a, a class for um, computer graphics back in the day it was Macintosh or, or you know Apple now um, but really that did do nothing <coughs> to what I do now it's, it's literally intuition a lot of physical experience you know hand, hands down and uh, just doing it and the way I looked at festivals and I still do is just it's a it's a wonderful place to try things out because it's not a commission work because most of the time, uh, <coughs> sorry, artists are not getting paid, you can do pretty much whatever you want within, of course, you know, uh, some restraints, but it's a wonderful place to learn new things on yourself, you know, <coughs> like what you're doing on your rooftop, which is great, and, you know, not everybody has a rooftop like that, so um, I don't have it, so I, I really use the we just start recording again and then uh, yeah. okay so if you want you can like uh, answer the question again if you feel like or you can like keep it short this time and you know just talk about the training part uh, that you had so it's up to you if you want to like uh, do the full thing again because i got it it's being the recording is being saved uh, from the start but uh, if you want to like uh, answer the question again you can do that well i just wanna 
yeah, I just want to say that um, I discovered that I'm not I'm not a um, I'm not good at learning from theory or from a class or stuff like that. I need to be hands on. And uh, that's why usually like if, if I really need to find something out, like, I don't know, some kind of feature on uh, Photoshop or some kind of like how to do, you know, the, the 3D or, you know, stuff like that, I would kind of like kind of kind of get a little bit of information here and there, but the real learning happens with my hands. I mean, I, I just have to try it out and see what works for me because, there, you know, some things like, for example, there's this uh, trend now, um, I'm sure you saw it with mural artists, is that they do like a doodling on the wall and then they transfer the design onto the wall. That's that's their grid method. Uh -huh. And I'm like, uh, no, like it doesn't work for me. It's too busy. It's too confusing. Uh, it hurts my brain. And also, Ooh. it really doesn't give you um, a roadmap. And for me, grid is the ultimate roadmap. I can, you know, I can do it anywhere. I can redo it anywhere. I can go back to my plans and kind of get the information from there. And I don't have to have anything. I don't have to have an outlet. I don't have to have, you know, I, it's just me, uh, measure tape and the design. That's about it. So, yeah. So learning is all from as I go and, and hands on and that's about it. I just, I just keep an open mind. Um, I, I like to change between mediums. Like, you know, I work with latex, house paint, uh, acrylics, pastels, or chalk, um, yeah, tempera paint. I, I come to that, uh, you know, medium part and your, what's your design process part in a bit, because I have, I, I okay. have written down a separate question for that. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, since you were uh, since you were uh, you just draw, uh, told that uh, you've uh, about your learning uh, how did your training happen? So uh, since I myself uh, do not have uh, any you know uh, proper training at an institute as an at an art institute, so similarly for me. Uh, it's been very much like uh, I tried stuff and you know made mistakes and then uh, oftentimes there were no nobody there was nobody to guide as well. But uh, I tried and made uh, mistakes like you mentioned that uh, I have the roof so I can you know uh, do the paintings or drawings and you know remove them so I have that luxury. So uh, but there are things like uh, sometimes I miss uh, stuff that if I had gone to or if I had a uh, training as uh, as an artist as a professional artist so some things might have been uh, easy for me some processes might have been easy for me that uh, i spent a lot of time on so i would have saved some time or uh, or maybe i had more chance to practice like uh, life drawing for instance since uh, we used to get models in universities and we could you know draw from them from life uh, they have these setups so it's difficult when you do it on your own so is there something that uh, you missed uh, or you you thought that you sh you could have done better if you gone to, if you'd gone to art school or uh, had a proper training or uh, are you happy with the way you be you trained uh, over the years um well th there's two answers to that first of all of course i mean there's there's good and bad in everything. So I can't say that my way is the better way and you know, the other way is not. I mean, it's not fair for me. I never walked that other way. So I'm sure they, they gained, you know, people who went to school gained so much knowledge and they have so many tools to help them through. So I'm not saying it's, it's one thing or the other. For me, it worked because, um, I, again, I don't, I don't have how to compare it. Earlier on, I tried to get into an art school and it didn't, it didn't accept me. So that is funny. Um, but the other side of your uh, question or kind of answering what you were uh, telling uh, earlier is that um, well, I, I didn't just learn by myself because you know I, I was bored or I didn't you know I had a lot of time on my hands. I had to, it was all kind of under pressure. It's like a pressure cooker. So I had to both learn 
and provide. So I had to excel at all times. So going to school and, and getting all the A's all the time. I mean, I didn't have time to kind of say, well, you know what, you know, yeah, I'm doing all my driveway, but it's going to take a week and it's okay. You know, when you go to festivals or when you, you know, you, you have to pay the bills, you have to work fast and you have to make sure you pace yourself. And it's, it's all, all the time it's under kind of pressure. And I think that really helped kind of squeeze. It's like a, it's like a, a giant, you know, paint tube that you squeeze out the best um, uh, fast because there's no other way. I mean, I, I, I started later in life. I didn't go to school. I was in a foreign country. Um, I had to compete, you know, I'm a woman. So all these things are, you know, were kind of, you know, were, were given. And I just needed to work past all those obstacles to make sure that I stay here and that I can, you know, I can support my family. So that that really helped in learning fast. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to learn fast. It's no other way. Yeah. Right. Uh, great. Uh, so so I, uh, earlier you talked about, uh, you know, using um, grades or about your, you know, how you uh, execute your projects uh, or what techniques you use to execute your projects. So I had the question that uh, what's your uh, design process like? Because I, I've, I've already invited a few artists to talk about their journey. And uh, this is probably the most interesting question that uh, uh, for me to know about uh, the design process for different artists. Uh, what uh, what processes do they have? Like I've met some artists, they, you know, do, um, they, you know, sometimes use live models, construct models like Andres Vera from Mexico. I've seen him, you know, construct models from board and, you know, then photographing them and then using them as a reference for his work. So what's your design process like? Where do you take your inspiration from? And uh, do you like to get particular ideas uh, in your work? And, uh, you know, to go with this, I have another question. Since you, uh, I've seen your work, a lot of it is uh, commercial work that you do uh, for commercial clients. And um, so I have I've also worked with commercial clients. So I know that uh, uh, in commercial projects, there isn't much, you know, um, create room for creativity or uh, ideas uh, of your own. So how do you like uh, balance them uh, you know work out the design and do you use like uh, do you do them uh, uh, sketches with your hand or uh, photograph or do you find photographic references or do you use like we uh, nowadays many artists use photoshop and other technology you know tablets stowing tablets and ipads so what's your whole process like well excellent question and all of the above <laughs> <laughs> really all of the above. Um, but the most uh, interesting, I think, part, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk in length about my process or some of it, because it can be all over the place. It can be very simplistic, and it can be very complex, and it can be, it depends on the design, it depends on, um, on the space. For me, uh, everything is about the space. So I do a lot of murals. So for me, it's, inter it's, it's super important to see the wall and then understand where you're seeing that wall from, um, you know, what's the texture of the wall, what's its surroundings, you know, all of this really, really matters for the design. Also, it depends on the budget, uh, on, on the project, on, you know, sometimes there's a um, request. So really, I mean, I do so many different things uh, that a lot, a lot goes into the mix of, of designing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, but typically I use a lot of Photoshop. I just pull up uh, references, um, uh, kind of kind of work or play with ideas on the wall itself until I say, oh, you know what, this kind of looks good. Um, so I put it, you know, I kind of save it and then I, you know, I play a little more and then I, you know, if, if I come to like a couple of good ideas, I show it to, to the client and they're like, oh, well, yes, no, you know, maybe, and, and, and we kind of, develop the, the, that, that kind of direction or take another direction. Um, but it can also be very, uh, very intense. Like um, for example, I just completed a candy jar mural 
um, which is basically the, the, the second version of a, of a candy mural I did last year in Wisconsin. And for that, I had my husband build me a shelf basically that is the same size of my wall um, and be putting putting the jars there so I can get really the best reflections and the best way um, because you know when you paint realistic and I'm not at all saying that I I am realistic I think what I call my style is more impressionistic realism because when you look closely it's not at all realistic it's a lot of paint strokes and and it's it's very impressionistic but when you you know when you go far back then everything kind of combines and it looks very realistic so um but but when you're painting that when you're trying to convey something that is realistic uh that there's no other way than to actually you know take picture of of as close as possible to what is going you know what would going on go on when you know if it if it was right there in in the field mm -hmm. um so definitely um that is a way as well but it can it can be so so many different things and yes i use photoshop i use tablet i use sketchbook pro i use my own sketching sketching sometimes um um really everything really everything Right. Uh, since you just mentioned that uh, you did, uh, you know, candy jar and mural, I was, uh, I was, while you said, before you said that, I was thinking about this question that I, one thing that I've noticed uh, in your works that uh, you play, you, you paint, uh, you know, a lot of uh, playful elements like, uh, or uh, like you paint a lot of toys, you paint a lot of candies and stuff. So is it something, uh, deliberate that you try because uh, the personal works that you do that i've seen uh, or the uh, ones that you do uh, i think you're, you're doing for shows as well now so they you know uh, contain a lot of these toys and candies and stuff so is it something uh, personal uh, is it deliberate where where you no know, that kind of work, where does it come from is it something I don't know. In childhood I don't know. <laughs> you try to you know uh, replicate because I also do very uh, whenever I do uh, murals or uh, even 3D artworks and I am given the liberty to you know uh, do my own ideas so I generally you know include uh, toys in them and they have uh, you know uh, a personal connection uh, with me so where uh, where does your imagery come from well i think um i think really i mean it, i'm gonna i'm gonna answer the question but through like a different kind of path maybe or a different explanation i think um what makes us artists is is what we choose to paint like you say or 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 do and how we do it, obviously, you know, what details we choose to bring into the work and what we decide to omit. And I, and, and it's, it's basically up to every, every one of our, uh, us, um, uh, I don't know, just, just inclination towards certain um, looks or certain aesthetics. Um, I don't have any particular inclin like I don't have any reason per se to, to choose one or the other. I think I'm looking for some kind of interest in what I do. I also a little bit kind of think about the audience. Like if I do a festival and I choose to do toys or stuff like that, or even the mural, the mural, the candy mural that I did. Well, for that is a little dif different because the, the city that I painted it in is called Sugarland, so it's kind of like the, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, but typically, I'm thinking, um, let me go to a place that everybody is um, happy with this, you know. Mm. Um, you know, some 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 artists are more, um, you know, they, they have more political issues that they want to tackle, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, social matters, uh, social justice, and and of course, and I I kind of kind of touch that as well. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, uh, people really want to. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just want to make people happy, if that makes sense. Uh, and and that comes, I think, um, 
I think from childhood, because in childhood, you know, we, we didn't have worries, you know, we didn't worry really. I mean, it, our parents were everything to us. We didn't have to think about anything. And I think it's a, it's a place for every one of us, most, most of us, I would say, is, is, a, is a place of, um, I don't know, kind of feeling better about ourselves and about life and, you know, not, not being worried so much about everything. Um, so I, I, I guess I gravitate into kind of making people feel that way when, when they see my work, I guess. Right. Okay. But this is, this is very, very interesting for me because, uh, uh, I also like, uh, paint a lot of toys. I've been doing that for like, uh, past two years or so, and I'm doing a series of work and I have a similar, uh, you know, very similar thought to, uh, and surprisingly we haven't, uh, met or, uh, we haven't had a discussion before on this topic. So, and surprisingly, uh, your thoughts are very, very similar. Uh, to mine because people ask me why do you paint a lot of uh, your, your works are very colorful and then there are a lot of sometimes there are toys or they you know take back uh, take them back to their childhood so they ask me why do you do that and the same same answer that in childhood that uh, we did not have any worries and you know we could uh, go about things without any worry and just enjoy the moment. So I'm very, you know, surprised uh, to know that you uh, have very, very, you know, similar uh, thoughts you have. So uh, it's amazing how how different we are and how similar we are. Yeah, yeah. That. Amazing. yeah. So. Again, that I I've seen uh, support. So this brings me to another question: that uh, what mediums do you work with? Like uh, I know you work with uh, water-based uh, paints most of the time. So do you work in other mediums as well, like um, oil-based uh, paints, or even uh, in water-based paints. What kind of paints do you use? uh since you do like a lot of work uh, you know in or, or as i put it ex uh, exterior murals like they are uh, out in the open so what kind of paints do you use for the you know reliability and endurance um so uh, well there's the practical issue um i use house paint um, that is designed to be painting houses. So obviously it's designed to last a little long. I think right now um, um, the status of, uh, of, of the world or the, the, the commerce in the world is that there's no really, no company really wants anything to last too long because then they'll be out of business. Mm -hmm. So I think the same could be done. And, you know, with all the, the you know, the, 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 poisonous uh, materials that were omitted from the paint industry and so forth. So I think like a water-based um, exterior paint lasts about the, with the same vibrancy of the colors, will mm. last about between eight and 10 years. Mm. And then you'll have to retouch it or maybe um, put some uh, coat on it before, um, after five years so it doesn't but anyway about eight to ten years I would say uh, for exterior walls um, so this is this is one medium I use also acrylics obviously I use um, uh, tempera paint which is very different because um, you can't really layer it um, I, I use chalk I use digital I use uh, I I did try a couple of times uh, using oil paints. Um, I will get back to it for sure, but not now. I use gouache. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of different things. And also, and I, I love it. I love to change between um, mediums because it's a little bit, and you'll understand because you talk at least two languages. Um, it's it's like changing languages. Mm. I speak three languages mm. and it really feels that it keeps my brain sharp when I switch, you know, between um, mediums. Like right now uh, I'm doing like a 3D on my driveway for Halloween. Mm. So I'm doing tempera. Tomorrow I have a gig that I'm doing, going to do chalk and Saturday and Sunday I have like a ginormous chalk piece that I'm going to have. All three of them will be different <laughs> this will be 3d 
tomorrow is going to be 2D and the next day is going to be like a hybrid of both. But the, the third will be super large scale. This that I'm doing now is kind of large scale, but still on my driveway. And tomorrow is going to be a normal one. So changing the scales and changing the mediums really helps me kind of keep fresh. And also, also it, it allows me to go back to mediums that I haven't done in a while and just kind of like... Um, say like, uh, oh an old friend that I haven't met in a while I'm so excited to see you again you know so mm. I really like that you know to just do all kinds of things and and to ever change and not to get stuck in one thing for too long because I can't for the life of me like the two like you said I I you know the candy so this was my second candy mural and I hope the last because I just can't for the life of me repeat myself too much because it's just boring <laughs> very boring so yeah that's it uh, so one thing that uh, I've noticed in the in your work, especially that uh, you do very you know large scale uh, murals, and uh, if I'm not wrong, you do them alone, so, and you do them uh, fairly very quickly. So is it something that you've developed over the years, or you know you trained yourself uh, to be that fast, or uh, and you know there is a fair amount of detail in uh, some of your works, in your works. Uh, so how did you like? Is it it was something uh, was it naturally natural, or did you like train for it? And uh, let me just attach one more question so you can uh, uh, you know answer together. So. Uh, since you do large scale murals, so what, how do you, you know, transfer your image uh, onto the wall? So you've already mentioned that uh, you use the grid method. Uh, it's probably the most effective one for most of the artists. Uh, and you mentioned that they're doodle grid as well. So do you use like projection as well or uh, whenever possible? Or you just rely on uh, grids? And since you do a lot of uh, large scale projects, so what's the the most effective uh, you know method to transfer your uh, image on the wall? What would be your opinion? So about the 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 speed of my work, um, I no, I never I never planned it. However, like I said earlier, uh, when you are in this pressure of both uh, paying the bills and uh, providing for my family and working well and all of the above, you just um, you just have to find ways to simplify and uh, work faster than it would take. It also, I think what I have <clears throat> that uh, a lot of artists don't seem to have or a lot of people that I know um, is that I have a good idea when to stop. A lot of people would kind of keep on doing it and then even ruin their work. I have a good, I have a good kind of, I don't know if it's discipline or I don't know what it is, but I can, I, I'm, I'm looking for the moment that everything works together. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not looking for a lifetime achievement. I'm not looking for a masterpiece. That's not my goal. When, I, when I'm doing something, I'm looking for the moment that everything looks good. Nothing jumps at me in sense of like, oh, that's ugly or that doesn't belong there, you know? Then I'll go and obviously fix it, but I'm definitely not looking for any kind of perfection. Um, and, and I think that really allowed me to kind of speed up my process and kind of know what what details to put, what details to not put, what what details work for me, most people, how amazing it is to have like a super complex, you know, reference and then just have a little bit of information on the wall and all of a sudden you see everything there. Your eyes, your brain kind of takes it there. So you don't have to go through all the little lines and all the things because they, they don't matter at all. And actually they will actually you know, ruin the piece if you go by, you know, doing that specifically. Um, so, so that is, that is, that is that. The other question, remind me. Yeah, the one, um, you use a grid method yes. to transfer yes. the work. Yes, I love the grid. I love the grid. I do use projection sometimes, um, for sure for text and logos. Mm -hmm. I'm very particular, so that is not going to fly freehand, for mm -hmm. sure. 
So that I heavily rely either on projection or transfer. Um, um, I did this gig um, uh, last week or a week before of um, doing like a tempera piece on the ground and it was a lot of, of text. So I printed like large scale um, print and then I just cut it to make it a stencil. So literally whatever my little brain can come up with uh, to make my work uh, faster and better and more efficient, I'm going to do it. You know, whatever it's going to take, um, I'm going to find a way to do it. And I think, again, it's, it's, it's that thing of being self-taught is that there's no limit. There's no, oh, but my teacher taught me that, so I need to do that. You know, there's none of that. I'm like, okay, literally, I'm like, okay, what? I sat down, looked at the design, and I'm like, okay, what is going to work here? Because, of course, I'm, I'm good at the, you know, the figurative part. That's not a problem. That was the, the shortest time. That, that was the fastest. But the other stuff, I'm not going to even remotely leave it for chance. It's going to be super precise, and I need to find a way to do it. So, yeah. But grid, ultimately, is my absolutely go-to method. But it's not for everybody. A lot of people rely on, on projection, which is fine as well. You know, it's whatever works for you. Um, I'm not, I mean, I think earlier in the day, I was kind of caught up in this, so oh, if you don't do it this way, you're this, and you do it that way, you're that, I, you know, whatever makes you work, whatever makes you comfortable in achieving your, you know, your painting, that's great. That's what it is, really. Right. Uh, it's been very, you know, um, uh, in interesting or enjoyable for me, you know, listening uh, to your processes and, you know, your journey. So uh, I have this one last question since I think we are, you know, coming towards the end of our session. So this one last question. So I think you've been working for uh, 12, 13 years I, uh, now. And uh, so, uh, and you pretty much, you know, uh, worked around the world, I think. So where do you see yourself uh, going uh, in the future? Like, are there any plans? What do you, where do you see your art going in the future? It will be like, you'll be probably doing more, uh, gallery shows or uh, where do you see yourself going and uh, what it one uh, or two advices would you give to you know the people who want to do you know uh, murals or uh, and street art in general so and uh, be it you know uh, professional artists who have the training uh, at art schools or uh, who do not have any training and they just want to try it so, yeah. Good, good question. Uh, the where, wh where I'm going. Um, I love that question because it's uh, well. I think it's every, everybody asks themselves that question. I hope everybody is asking themselves that question. Um, for me, again, uh, because this whole art adventure uh, came from um, our will to stay here in the United States. Um, the art was kind of like, the art part was kind of like a bonus of sorts. And I didn't come or I don't come from that place of like, oh, I want to be like the best artist in the world. And I want to be the best this. And I want to be the, 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 the biggest that. And I just don't have that whatsoever. Um, I just want to do my thing. And I want to um, pay the bills, obviously, you know, be comfortable. Um, um you know, live my little life, um, share my gift as much as possible. Um, I think right now, I mean, I, I started late, so I really don't have too much time to kind of climb on ladders and scaffolds and do all that because it is what it is. Mm. Um, but I'm super grateful for what I had it so far. It's not, it's not that I'm kind of not going to do that, but I'm just aware of like things that, you know, change and, and, and age and, and things like that. I think right now our dreams are concentrated in uh, maybe kind of um, moving outside of the city a little bit and having um, like a little place um, and maybe even having a little um they're like Airbnb 
places for people to come and hang out and maybe, you know, artist resort or kind of do some workshops. Me having a studio, my husband bakes, so he'll have a little coffee shop, maybe something little just for, you know, just to have fun and to be able to kind of make it and, um, and survive this world. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's so interesting, that question, because a lot of people kind of lose their ways into, you know, the social media quest of uh, who has more likes and who has more followers and who's this and who's that. And when you, you know, you, you scroll through Instagram and you're like, you're, you, I, I feel sometimes, you know, when I scroll through and I feel that, that I'm shrinking to this little nothing because, you know, so many people are out there and so many people are doing amazing things and, and it's intimidating at times, you know, it's like, you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nobody, I'm nothing. I mean, and then I'm like, but yes, I am. So what? <laughs> I'm like, just living my life. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I just do my thing and what makes me happy. Um, and that's about that that's that's it the advice is just that you know be you know do what makes you happy try new things um don't don't listen to people and they say to tell you what to do um you know try new mediums uh you you might never know i never knew that i could do portraits and i do them very well um i think um i Honestly, I didn't know that I can do any of what I do, and here I do it. So, who knows? Or anybody else? Right. Right. Very, very, you know, good advice. Uh, and uh, it was a, a you know, pleasure talking to you and, uh, you know, listening to your experiences and uh, your journey. So, uh, now we've uh, you know come to the towards the end of our session so i would like to you know thank you again for uh, you know taking out time uh, from your very very busy schedule and you know joining me for this uh, thing that i've started uh, so thank you very much so if you want to say anything uh, that uh, you know you, you wanted to say and i didn't ask you can you know say now um, i thank you again I, I, and i thank you as well and I think it's wonderful what you're doing because I think um, I've done many different interviews, but there's nothing like a fellow artist that we can talk about things because you know about you know what I'm talking about. Oh. So it's not just um, random questions that nobody cares about, and this is more to the point. And I think it will be interesting for other peers and other colleagues to listen uh, beyond the just you know the random you know life experience or what you did when you know before or stuff like that. So definitely uh, awesome. Kudos to you for, for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. And good much. night. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.